this is a really random start to this video. I want to just clarify. Um, in this video, I'm going to be saying that my mental health has been the best it's ever been. And at the time of filming this video, which was a couple of weeks ago, um, it was. I want to be 100% transparent and honest on my channel. And my mental health has taken a bit of a nosedive uh, the last holidays. Uh, that's mostly due to the fact that I've just celebrated a celebrated i don't really celebrate my birthday but i just celebrated my birthday and it's not due to the fact that i've grown another year older it's nothing to do with that it's just i always feel kind of low around my birthday it's why i never celebrate it it's been like new year's i feel like i try to have as low expectations as possible and then i always end up having them exceeded so i didn't have a bad birthday or anything like that but my mental health just wasn't great you know there are certain things that every year you kind of hope you'll be in a different place yeah it's just I'm not doing that great and I want to be honest about that this 100% was working for me for like the last two three months I was doing really really well I'm just going through a bad patch at the moment and I want to be and I wanted to be honest about that so that's not to say all these techniques don't work. I'm still gonna have bad days. That's just what I'm going through right now. I still really wanted to share this video because I think that it could still help people and it may even help future me in like a year or two if I'm in a worse place than I am now. I'm not as mentally happy as I was while filming this video originally. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to be honest about that, like I said. I'm rambling, because I don't really know how to explain it. I hope this helps somebody with these techniques. If they if they do help on bad days, that's amazing. But just know, no matter what happens with depression, you're always going to have bad days, and you're going to have good days. You can have good months, good years. But it's mental health, you know. You have your You have your trials, and I just hope we can all get through it. I guess so uh you're a bit closer today because i want to go through something very personal i want to go through what i've found helps me with my depression um because for the first time in quite a few years um i've had really really good control of my mental health now i'm not saying that this will necessarily work for anyone else i just want to share my experience Firstly, because I'm, I'm really open with you guys on everything that I deal with anyway. I don't know, if this video can help anyone, I think it's worth filming. This isn't to say that even though I do every single one of these things, I won't necessarily get depressed uh, ever again. That's obviously going to happen. I still have my sad moments, but it, it's not to the extent that it used to be. I haven't cut in, don't even know how long now, but it's been at least... I think it's well over a year and I think that's that's really good and I haven't been suicidal for two or three years I've had suicidal thoughts but I haven't it hasn't been to the extent that it's been before where I've genuinely considered committing suicide these are the things that I personally do to help me with my mental health I hope like I said I hope this helps someone else because I know a lot of people deal with depression. It took me a long time to figure out the best ways to deal with it. This is going to sound stupid, but when uh, I'm not in a relationship especially, so I'm not in the lovey-dovey stages of relationship or whatever, I've been in and out of relationships for the past, what, four years? I don't know, none of them seems to stick. When I'm not in a relationship, I think a lot of people that are single, you have those moments where you, you miss, I don't know, cuddling up on the sofa and watching TV or coming home to someone or just like the little things in a relationship. Those little things, those are the things I think a lot of people who are single miss. Um, and I I don't have a way to stop that because I still struggle every now and then. Honestly, the longer you're single, the, in some ways, the easier it gets. I mean, I've been single for going on eight months. I still have those moments every now and then. It, you know, it was a lot more first got out of a relationship, but Every now and then it still happens. I still feel, you know, a little bit lonely every now and then. But what makes it worse 
a hundred percent worse uh, is when I watch rom-coms so I have basically cut those out of my watching habits I re-watch a lot of stuff so I re-watch series and films a lot because it just I think it's something to do with my ADHD or being neurodivergent or something I can't remember I, I remember reading up about one of my disorders and they said that re-watching re-watching stuff brings comfort you think you know some of the rom-coms that I've you know loved since I was a kid they'd be worth re-watching to give me comfort no and I'm talking specifically rom-coms I'm not necessarily saying every romantic relationship in every film because there's too many films with at least a romantic you know storyline every film specifically rom-coms where it's it's so centered around these two people getting together I still love rom-coms I still think they're they're good movies there's like I said there's some that are my favorite movies but it doesn't help my mental health when I'm single at least I think it just reminds me consistently what I always in a way know that's missing but you miss it more when it's like in the forefront of your face and you're almost being told look you could be in a really happy relationship although Every, no relationship is perfect like that's what these movies never fucking show is that you know what happens after the movie ends the amount of people that break up get divorced uh, people that stay in unhappy relationships just because they're scared of being alone or even stay together for property like it's so hard to get on property ladders nowadays that people will stay together just because it's expensive no one takes pictures of the bad moments you have to remind yourself so much on social media and there may be happy couples and things like that but people have bad moments everyone fucking argues everyone has bad moments in their relationships you just don't post them you don't openly turn around and say this shitty thing happened in my relationship today you know it's very rare it's really rare everyone just shows the nice pictures because that's what people want to see they want to see happy people they, they want to see the positive images and I'm not saying people should post necessarily the bad moments, I'm just saying that's something to remember. Which, going on to uh, social media accounts, unfollowing accounts. People that I really like them as content creators on other platforms I was following on Instagram. And one of them, this is no shade, do not think I'm shading this person, but so does life. I think she's, a, I've been watching her since she was maybe like 18, 19 or something. Uh, since she had like grey hair, I think she had maybe 70 or 80,000 subscribers at the time and now she's like well over a million. She's doing really well for herself and I'm really happy for her. Problem is when I got broken up with the first or second time my ex, I was consistently seeing photos of her and her partner and this isn't just her, there's other uh, accounts, this is just the one I, I can think of specifically because it's the first one I actively unfollowed and realised it did me good. The other ones where I'd consistently see these happy couple all the time, all over my social media feed. Again, it was it was this sort of like, almost this, like I said, rom-com effect. It was, trying to, it was almost reminding me, you're alone, you're lonely, you don't have a partner or whatever. So, like I said, I unfollowed, not because I dislike Soph, but because it wasn't doing my mental health no good whatsoever. And I think that's something that has to be normalised, is it's okay to unfollow people, even if you like them, if it's doing you no good. It's similar in a way, this is not to do with my mental health, but in a way when people have a kid and then all they do is post picture after picture after picture of their kid and I used to follow their account, for example, for them and now that it's all about the kid. I think one of the examples is maybe Casey Holmes. I think I unfollowed her. When she had her kids, that's all she posted. That's fine if, you know, if that's what she wants to post, that's absolutely fine, but that's just not why I followed. I like cute animal photos. <laughs> I'm not a cute kid photo, uh, social media friendly sort of person. I'm not hating on the photos, I'm just saying that I just don't want my social media, my Instagram for example, full of baby photos. Nothing to do with mental health, just as an example of other reasons why I unfollowed people that was a huge help to my mental health by like i said not seeing th something that was gonna make me unhappy or remind me of what could make me unhappy i guess it was getting rid of that trigger you could say and that's the same as well with um i know this is gonna sound really petty but people you could be jealous of and you feel like for example if there's someone you may follow i can't think of an example but you see this person and you're following them and you think they're really down to earth and then they appear 
really vain because every single photo they take, all of them are very professionally done photos. And that might be, again, that might be what they want to do on their social media, but it's triggering like a jealousy note in your body, or if it's triggering you to feel some sort of way, then it's not worth following that person anymore, I would say. Having those ne negative triggers, it doesn't do your mental health any good whatsoever. Take it away, take that trigger away. It sounds simple, but when you when you finally realise, do you know what, but I do not need to be following this person, then don't. People take social media sometimes so personally. I remember seeing, on, um, I think it was over Twitter and stuff, people were like, oh my god, this person unfollowed me, or this person blocked me or something, and they take it really personally. I'm like, it's not about you, it's about them, it's about their boundaries or their mental health or whatever. Like, it's not about you. That's why I didn't get offended or anything when Jeffree Star blocked me. I was just like, I don't know what I did, but okay. A bit weird that someone who of that calibre has blocked little old me, but okay, whatever. Okay, I spoke about this in a previous video and I know this is gonna sound extreme. Minimizing the amount of alcohol or drugs or even caffeine that you take, starting to limit it, decrease it, makes a huge difference. I remember caffeine was a trigger for me. Anything I lean on, to be honest. I mentioned about alcohol in my previous video where I was, I've used it as coping mechanism before, like for stress. And I've had a drink after work and then the following day I've had a drink after work, just one drink each day. And then I have like a crash. Exactly the same thing happened to me with caffeine. It was more extreme. I had, I think like three or four coffees in a day. That was like two or three days for, like consistent. And then I crashed and my my brain can't, cannot take crashes. Lucky I've never fucking taken drugs because I think that would have been uh, bad. Unless you are going to actively get tested to understand what your brain chemistry is doing with each drug, each unit of alcohol, each cup of coffee, whatever, then you need to try and figure out any substance. Even I think, I think people have even had issues in a similar way with energy drinks because they have a lot of caffeine in them. Starting to limit things like that can make a huge difference and I don't just mean I'll only have one a day I'm talking about like limit yourself to maybe unless it's you know something prescribed obviously by a doctor try to limit yourself to maybe like one a week and see how that goes and if you feel like you've done okay one a week then cut yourself down to one every two weeks get yourself out of the habit of using something as a crutch see how it affects your mental health whether it's put in a positive way or a negative way if it's obviously a positive way, great, then start to limit ev even more. This is just my experience, at least with alcohol. It's made a huge difference to basically not drink almost ever. I drink maybe once every three months or something. But it's made a huge difference. I'm not saying this will necessarily work for every single person, but it, it like I said, it, this may help someone. I hope it does. The next one is reducing the amount of media and news that I intook. Of course, we've got like the energy crisis, the war in the Ukraine, you've got the process in Iran. There is so much going on and negative in the world right now. In some ways there is nothing you can do about it. I can try and use my platform to raise awareness, but I can't actively change anything, for example, that's going on in Iran. So if I was to digest every single bit of news that came out about Russia and Ukraine or Iran, I would just get so depressed. I remember I, I used to go into work every day. I used to get on a tube train and at the tube station they always had like the free newspapers. So I used to read the Metro newspaper every day. And the second I stopped, I realized I got so much better with my mental health because obviously it goes without saying, but the news don't share positive stories. That's not what it's there for, obviously. But you don't need to digest every single thing. If you have the news on consistently, I, I read my Google alerts once once a week maybe, I won't read it every single day. I don't need to know every single thing happening in the world ev every day. I have enough stress to deal with every single day in my little, little tiny world. If I can't deal with any more, I don't read it until I'm ready. It's still going to be there. You don't realise until again you limit this sort of stuff how much of a toll it takes i mean i got upset in a previous video talking about how i was worried about the uh, one of my neighbors not being able to afford the energy crisis and i i do still worry about it obviously but you can't think about these things all the time and whatever is going to help your mental health do it as long as it's a healthy thing to do do it 
I don't think anyone can blame people for that. Something positive than just, you know, limiting everything that you do. <laughs> Find the thing that makes you happy. If it's reading a book, take time to sit and read a book. If it's like 10, 15 minutes in the morning or in the evening or like, um, I remember I used to sit and I used to read and have coffee and listen to the birds and read my book for easily well over an hour and it really helped my mental health. In the evenings, I consistently listen to music. The more I play music, the better my mental health is. Finding songs, whether it's like 80s hits or pop music that's nostalgic for me or like my my new favourite band Normandy I listen to their album consistently and like at least 30 minutes to an hour almost every day listening to music and it 100% helps and if I'm not listening to music I have music on in the background and I will be I will sing I found that I have a huge love for singing I don't think I'm a very good singer. I'm very, very, very average. By taking 10, 15 minutes, maybe even half an hour, maybe once a week, to sit and sing along to some ballads or something while I'm washing up or whatever, oh my God, it makes such a difference. And like I said, this is not necessarily something that will help everyone, but it had a huge effect on me. I think music has a, a bigger effect on people than they realise. It can really lift your mood. It can really dampen your mood too, so. <laughs> Be careful which songs you pick. But yeah, it can really help. Forgive yourself for only doing the small things or doing nothing at all. What I mean by that is if today you only have enough energy to work and the rest of the evening you are vegetable on the sofa, that's fine. You need that break. You need to forgive yourself for taking those breaks when you need them. Don't always feel like you have to be doing something. You have to be on all the time. That is in itself luxury. To be able to take time for yourself, whatever it is. Like I said, whether it's singing in the shower or painting your nails or just vegging out and watching Netflix or YouTube or something. That is the mental break that you need and that's okay. You need to forgive yourself for only doing this, the small things or nothing at all when necessary and not feeling guilty for taking those moments. That is so important. I've had to do that myself. I'm 100% a workaholic. If I'm not working, I'm like working on YouTube. I have had to forgive myself for not getting videos up when I want to or not having the time or energy or sometimes I'm just not in the right headspace to edit or film and that's okay. If I need to take a bit longer, a few more days, that's okay because at the end of the day, we're all just human. We need to be able to breathe. For some people, we we feel guilty for taking time for ourselves. I know it was in some sort of TV show where they said that we're a generation where we work, 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 and then we do finally relax. We feel guilty for our relaxing being sitting in front of the TV vegging out because we are so exhausted from the rest of the week or whatever. We shouldn't feel guilty for taking that time to mentally recharge. You can't necessarily do that if you're having to, I don't know, go see family or go on a day trip or try and make the most of every single day you have. Some days you just need to chill out. And speaking of vegging out, going back to the single life kind of thing, but you need to find ways of being happy alone. I struggled for a really long time because I was in monogamous relationships from when I was 15 years old to when I was 28, 29. So a long time and I've felt empty every time I wasn't in a relationship because I felt like a piece of me was constantly missing. I didn't think I could ever be happy on my own. And that's not the case. I just needed to find ways to be happy. The ways I was previously happy, the ways that I'd found to cope between 15 to 28, 29 or whatever, was always leaning on my partner, expecting that they would make me happy because I was always around someone that I loved. You don't need to be in a relationship to be happy. You just have to find things that make you just as happy. Know that the rest will follow if it needs to. There are some people that are truly happy being alone and have been alone for years and years and years and years and years. You don't necessarily need to be in that relationship, in any relationship. It's always tough, obviously, in the, you know, the first few months. But you get in new routines and you find new ways to create that same happiness. That's important because being alone with your mental health is hard as fuck. Learning how to do that without having someone as a crutch, it makes a huge difference. And I think it will help the next relationship if you truly end up wanting one. I think it will help the next one 
so much more because it won't be the same sort of relationship it will be you won't be expecting them to create your happiness they'll just be adding to it that's what a relationship should be okay and the last thing is letting things go there is no time limit on hate or anger or upset stress especially there is no time limit on when or how you can let it go i'll come to stress in a second understand that you holding on to that rage and that upset or you're holding on to that it's only affecting you it is not affecting them the person you are upset about the person that you are angry at not necessarily talking about the upset of a you know a loved one passing away that's completely different talking about someone that made you upset that person doesn't necessarily deserve your forgiveness and i'm not saying you have to actively go out of your way to say that you forgive them what i'm saying is by forgiving them you're letting go of it you're letting go of all that upset that anger there's a, a thing in eat, eat pray love oh, i really miss him so miss him send him some light and love every time you think of him then drop it i almost feel like you need to do the same with things like that it's not, this isn't for them it's for you i think that's so important because Holding on to anger, it just it doesn't do you any good. Holding on to upset doesn't do you any good. It 100% takes time. But by f by letting that go, getting that off your shoulders, it's such a relief. And it makes a huge difference to your mental health. Because there's someone that I've, I was angry at for years. S Sandra Bullock said it very, very well. Someone gave me advice. They said, you know, not everyone that's hurt you cares. Someone said, uh, uh, forgiveness lets you off the hook. Why would you carry that with you? Because they don't care. If the person doesn't care, why are you tainting and infecting all the amazing moments that could happen in your life with someone that doesn't care how they hurt you? So how do you figure out how to let that go? And then lastly, with stress. Stress is something that every single person deals with differently. Sometimes just taking a second to away from your computer, just being like, do you know what, I need to go get a glass of water and cool down for just a second because otherwise... The more you let your stress into your work, the more your work will suffer. And I'm not saying that you're necessarily bad at your job. I don't think I'm bad at my job. But you're more likely to make mistakes because your emotions 100% will control you. And you have to take that time. Sometimes I even have to, I'm rushing doing so many things and I'm like, hang on, take a second and think for a second. Am I doing this right? My ADHD goes so fast. I'm like, hang on, let me just check did, did I capture everything? I have literally done four things all at the same time. I had like some reports running, this thing do, doing, this this thing I was sorting out, that thing I was running for this one, and this one I was doing for that one, and I was sorting out these emails, about to go on this call, and I had to deal with a lot. And sometimes I had to be like, whoa, just take a second, take a second, think, now continue. Again, I know this probably sounds stupid to a lot of people, but it's really helped. Stress has been something that I have struggled with for a really, really, really long time and I will definitely struggle with it. Probably for the next 30 years. I hope I get to retire at some point in my 60s. At this rate, I'll probably be 72 or something by the time I retire. But I hope that I'm starting to find ways to cope with it. If I find more, I will 100% make another video about how to deal with stress, whether it's work-related or home-related or anything. Because I think it it's something that too many people deal with i know it sounds stupid but you may think that and I, I have to remind myself of this a lot you may think that taking that 30 seconds one minute two minutes to go and get a glass of water or go get a coffee is you know it's not time you can waste you'll make more mistakes by not taking that time i've had to break that habit and i'm sure i'll still do exactly the same and go against my own advice but Take that 30 seconds, that minute. Take at least half an hour for lunch, minimum. I'm, I try and make sure every day, if I don't take a lunch, there's a really, really good reason for it. I will always try and make sure I take an hour lunch. Most of the time I don't even eat my lunch at lunchtime anymore. I make sure I still take that hour, whether I'm editing or just watching TikToks or reading my book or whatever. I always take my hour because I that's the only break I get. I almost always work overtime. I need to take time for myself every now and then because otherwise if if you don't if you don't take any time whatsoever not like i said not even if it's lunch breaks if you want to work through your lunch because you feel it's necessary you do you i've had to do it i literally did it today but make sure you take a few breaks throughout the day you know sometimes i've even i've even sat at my desk for so long and I, i've been like i cannot stop to even go to the toilet that's how bad stress 
used to get for me and I don't let it do that anymore. I think, I hope, it's evident that my mental health has been much, much, much better. Better than I've known it in a long, 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 long time. I don't feel miserable. I don't feel like my life is worthless for not being in a relationship. These are just small things that I'm doing. I'm not doing anything big. I'm not like, oh my God, I've got to change my, change my job, and move house and do this and do this big thing and do that big thing. I'm not doing big things. I'm just doing little things. And it's made, a, over time, it's made a huge difference. And I genuinely hope that this helps someone. And if it doesn't, I hope that in a few years time, if I'm struggling again, I look back at it and I can take my own advice and start to do these small things again or find new things that help me. Like these things are helping me now. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope somebody found it helpful. I hope maybe future me found it helpful. Please take care of yourself, guys. It can be a sad, lonely world out there. With everything going on right now in the world, sometimes it feels like you're not doing enough. Like I said, just sitting and vegging out, watching YouTube or something. Casper, I'm almost done! <laughs> I was tired of his toy, he knows I'm finished. You know that it's enough. Having time for yourself is enough. Sometimes that's what you need to do those days, and that's okay. I better go play with my cat, because <laughs> he's really, he really wants my attention. But yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.